Today, I received a Discord message from my coach telling me that he beat the world champion in 26 moves with en passant, a move so tricky that players on chess.com have mass reported it thinking it's a bug. I've never seen anything like this happen before. Let's check out the game. So Magnus with the black pieces, Hammer with the white pieces, our beloved super grandmaster, coach, and commentator, even if he's been yoinked by Anna Kremling. We're not talking about that. So Hammer starts off with e4. Magnus plays g6. d4. Hammer's already taking all of the center here. He's very happy. What does is, what is Magnus continue with? He pushes e6. I think, Ham I, I think Magnus is just playing modern events. He was, he was playing this pretty passively to start off. But Hammer has no fear. Hammer goes h4 because he wants to attack. Does that scare off Magnus? No. Well, actually, maybe a little bit. He does play h6, which makes sense. Because now, if white goes h5, you could just play g5. And then it stops the attack, so it's a cool little trick. Um, I think one thing that actually a lot of people don't know is that they automatically think you have to respond with h5, but h6 also works here. So we're, we're, we're learning from Magnus as well. Okay, h6, bishop f4. Hammer is basically playing this how all beginners are taught to play chess. You put your pawns in the center, you take the knight out, the bishop, it looks good. Bishop g7, queen d2, we're just gonna go past the opening a little bit here. Magnus finally puts a, saw, uh, a pawn in the center. And Magnus is Magnus, so I just assume that every single opening he plays is good. But if I were playing this with the black pieces, these are the kinds of positions I really struggle in because your bishop on g7 is completely blocked by your opponent's pawns and he hasn't developed this side of the board. c5, challenging the center. c3, he just defends it right away. Knight bc6, Magnus is just developing and he's putting pressure towards the center. Knight a3, because he didn't have any other spots for his knight and he can reroute it to c2. King f8. So the computer really didn't like this move. I don't know if he mouse slip. Actually, no, I know he didn't mouse slip. He can't castle because then the pawn on h6 is going to fall. I'm going to be honest. I don't really understand why Magnus played king f8. Maybe he was trolling. Maybe there's some super GM depth that is above my pay grade. To which Hammer gets really greedy and he just gobbles up one of these pawns. And by the way, the game ends 16 moves from now. Hammer made it in 26 moves. Okay, so he gobbles up the pawn. Um, usually it's not just a free pawn because now the pawn on e5 is a little bit weaker and you also have double pawns, so it's not it's not that clear. Oh, hello, Hammer. Knight b5, d6. Okay. Knight b5, d6 is the reason he went king f8. That makes sense because Hammer had this plan to get his knight in. So b6. Uh, at this point, I think Magnus is just trying to develop a little bit faster and open up one of these files. So we're gonna keep looking. Took with the queen, which makes sense. He's activating his queen. His king is actually more safe on f8 than it was on e8, because it's not quite in the center of the board. He does have a really bad position though. Bishop d3, Hammer just continues playing simple chess, developing his bishops. Magnus is trying to trade off this bishop, which makes a ton of sense because this is a bad bishop. It was blocked by its own pawns, whereas Hammer has a very strong bishop. b4, whoa. Hammer's just letting him trade off the bishop. Computer didn't like that, Hammer. Okay, but Magnus decided not to take, and he said he goes for the aggressive move d4, which is basically putting pressure on c3 because it's defending b4, and it's also opening up d5 for his knight. He has to play pretty dynamic here because his position is worse than white. Hammer goes b5. Look at him. He's creating a fork. This looks very dangerous. This is super tactical. So Magnus takes on c3. He got a piece here. Hammer moves his queen away. He's offering a trade, which is interesting. The computer didn't like that. Um, the computer liked queen e2 to just continue, you know, supporting b5 and, and winning a piece. But I guess what Hammer is thinking is that he's going to win a piece. And if the queens are off the board, then he's chilling. So actually taking the queen is not bad. I think the reason why this is a risky move is because of the tricky knight before, but I don't want to look into that because that's too complicated. So we're going to move on. Knight d5. 
He's attacking the queen and the bishop. Everybody can see that, but I'm going to highlight it anyways, just because I sometimes miss, you know, free queens. Maybe somebody in chat is missing it. I don't know. It could happen. Hammer trades off the queens. And the incredible thing about this, 10 moves from now, Hammer will checkmate Magnus without having the queen on the board. Okay, so these two pieces, they're still pinned. Um, other than that, Magnus does have this pass pawn that is looking dangerous, but it doesn't matter. He's going to lose a piece. He does have some compensation. Sorry, Hammer needs to take care of the bishop on f4 first. Oh, I guess he decides not to. The computer does say this is a blunder, though. Did you blunder, Hammer? Are you saying Super GM's making mistakes, too? You got outplayed? Okay, well, that was a mistake. He should have moved his bishop, but hey, you know, things happen. Things happen. Um, so now, Magnus is actually back. Somehow he came... He recovered from that position, as he somehow manages to do all the time. Um, position is still even. It's just super weird, as you can see. These two pawns, same amount of material, but very different. Hammer has two doubled pawns. Magnus doesn't, but they're still past pawns. And the other thing is that Magnus's pieces on the king side are still a little bit awkward. Still, incredible that he ended up checkmating. So bishop e4. I like this move. He's pinning the knight to the rook. Very logical. Rook takes a6 because he's attacking the knight. Um, really, it seems kind of forced. He has to take the knight. Black continues by taking on a3. And Hammer castles. Wow. Okay, I like this because he is bringing his rook to the open file and he sniffs out his only chance is to try and checkmate Magnus here. Again, I, I, I don't know how Magnus actually ended up getting checkmate. I'm very surprised by this. Okay, so Magnus goes king g8. He's trying to put his king on a safe square on h7, which looks like it makes a lot of sense. However, dun dun dun, there is a rook on this file that might open up. The knight might be coming to g5. The bishop might be coming to e4. You know, even if the king gets onto that square. And even though there's no queen on the board, it is still dangerous. Rook d8 check. And here is the crazy move, you guys. Bishop f8 is what Magnus had to play. I'm guessing he just thought that King H7 was safe. And now, fun tactic for anybody who's super sweaty. Mate in 13. Knight G5 check. Beautiful. You can't take, because he's gonna take back. So H takes G5, H takes G5, Knight H5, Rook takes. All of this is basically forced. If he blocks with the bishop, then he just loses too much material, so he has to take. Hammer goes bishop e4 check. Magnus is a gentleman and he lets him get the en passant check. He plays f5. Hammer goes e takes f6. It is an en passant, mate. The crowd goes wild. It is the most glorious day in Hammer's life. I don't know if I'm the first person he messaged after or one of like many 20 people he messaged, but I'm honored that I call Hammer my friend. Hammer, this was a beautiful game. Congratulations.